RegisterNurseRN.com and today I just want to demonstrate and show you how to prep for your IV. Before you start an IV, there's some things that you have to do. You have to get your supplies ready and you have to make sure that everything works properly, caps are connected, and that you're ready to go before you actually stick the patient and get the IV. So today I just want to go over the supplies and how to prime your INTs and show you how that's done. First, we have our IV start kit. These are in most clean holds. You can get that. It has everything that you will need to start your IV, and I'll go over that here in a second. You will need an extension to connect to the IV. This right here that I have is a long extension. Some facilities just have the cap or they have this, so you can choose either one you need. Get your IV that you plan on using. This is a 22 gauge. It's one of the smaller ones, but be sure to ask yourself, is this patient going to be getting blood? If so, they need an 18 gauge or a 20 gauge. Also, get a flush because you will need a flush to flush your line and to make sure that the IV is patent, that it hasn't infiltrated, and that it feels good on the patient. So make sure you always get a normal saline flush. These are normally pre-filled. Some facilities may not have the pre-filled where you actually have to draw up your own saline, but they're going more towards the pre-filled syr syringes, so get that. So first, let's go over to our kit. This is how I set up for my IVs. There's really no standard for that. It's what you learn over time and what you get used to. So this is what I do. I open my kit, and in the kit, this is a kit that has this type of supplies. Your kits may be different at your facility, but um, this kit has a tourniquet. You'll use that to put on the patient's arm to get your vein. I normally like to first off look for a vein on my patient, and so I put that on them. Then this is your tape. You will use your tape to secure the IV. Securing your IV is so important because if you don't tape it down, your IV can slip out. I've had that happen to me a couple times, and I learned fast to always tape my IV down. So what I normally do is, it comes with this, that helps you pull it back. I pull it back, and I peel about several inches off of tape, long enough to secure around the IV, and I just take that off, and I take this end off as well. And I like to cut it, or tear it in half, like that, because I take each piece of tape and tie around the IV cannula part which I'll show you a little bit later. So in the meanwhile, I just stick this beside of me so after I get the IV, I can tape it down really fast. So I'm just gonna stick this right here. Then you also have your cleaner because you always clean your site after you find your vein to prevent infection. This right here, this kit comes with betadine. People are allergic to betadine, so always ask if your kit came with betadine if they're allergic to betadine because you wouldn't want to use this. How this would work is you would crack it, and when you crack it, all the betadine fills right here and you clean the patient's skin off. Normally, new kits are coming with what's called chlorhexidine alcohol. Um, it's just a really strong antiseptic that cleans, and it works the same way. This right here is just a regular alcohol pad, so if your patient was allergic to betadine, don't use that, use the alcohol pad. Here is your date and time. You'll put your date, the time, what gauge of IV you started, and your initials or name. Um, depending on your hospital protocol, IVs are normally only good for five days and they have to be changed out. And this just lets oncoming nurses know how long that IV's been in, if it needs to be changed and if they couldn't see the gauge of needle and who started it. So it's very important to put that. Also included in the kit is a band-aid. I don't use that a lot unless I miss or I'm removing the IV. And then gauze, of course, if you get blood around the cannula site, you can clean your blood up or you can, if you miss, you can cover the insertion site up. So that is what is in your kit. Next right here is the extension. Like I was saying before that um, some facilities have the caps, but this is an extension that will screw onto the IV once you hit the IV. Right here, this is a tip. Whenever you are starting your IV and you prime your line, because you need to prime this with saline, which I'll do here in a second, there's air in here, okay? So you have to get rid of this air and prime it with the saline to prevent injecting air in your patient. 
So what I like to do is I get my saline out. This comes with pre-filled saline, which makes your dog a lot easier. And in this saline is a little air bubble. You will have to get this air bubble out because you don't want to inject air into the patient. So what you do is take your little cap off and use really good technique because you don't want to contaminate the needle. And you gently just pull back on the plunger, okay? And then just push and then you get your air out, just like that. And then I like to put my cap back on just to keep it sterile and put it beside it. Okay, now what I do, because this is still sterile and clean, I hold this and you screw on. It's needleless, so you screw on here and you just push some saline in until it comes out at the end. See how it's coming out at the end? That's nice and primed. And I like to keep the cap off of this. This cap was on the end because this part right here is going to screw into the cannula part of the IV. And I remember one time I started an IV and I forgot to take my cap off because you only have two hands. And one finger is going to be putting compression down on the IV line because blood will come out of the IV line. So I had left the cap on and I wasn't able to pull the compression this cap off of the cannula and end of this and blood had came out and I had to hurry up. So good tip, just take this cap off and keep it clean and sterile by just putting it back in its package so it won't go anywhere. And I just like to do that. So after I start my IV, I can just grab my saline and then just connect to the IV and flush after I've bought it. And then here's your needle. This is a 22 gauge. It's blue. I have a um, video on IVs, the different gauges, because they are different colors. There's green and pink, and those are different gauges, but this is a 22. And what I do, I get ready to prep the patient, stick them, you remove the cap, and what will happen you will insert your IV and then you'll have to thread the cannula, I call it the straw, but the proper name's cannula, into the vein. And you will have it in the vein. There's your needle. You always hit your button to get the safety um, to trigger so the needle goes in so you will not get a stick, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna set to the side. And once your IV is in the vein, this little straw right here will set in the vein. And whenever that is, you'll have blood coming out and you'll want to hold some compression right there. And you'll take your IV thing that you primed, being careful, and you'll screw it right there, like so. Make sure you get it very tight because if you don't, blood will leak out the end. So you have it connected, this is in your patient, and you're just going to flush some saline like so. See it's squirting out right there and that's just going in their vein. Whenever you do that, you're going to feel around the side, make sure it doesn't bubble up. Um, the patient may say, ow, that hurts, that stings. That's normally not a good sign because that means that that saline is going in the surrounding tissues and it's infiltrated, so you'll want to take it out. If the patient says, oh, that's cool feeling, or ooh, it feels like something's dripping down my arm, or I can taste or smell something, that's generally a good sign because your saline is in the system, in the vein. So you have that, then that's in, and you'll use your tape that I showed you earlier to tape down the site. And I like to put my tape underneath the wings and then just crisscross it like so and tape it down onto their skin and have it nice and secured, put its little tegaderm or whatever you have and tape it down. So that right there is how to set up your supply. I went a little bit into actually starting the IV I have a video that I'll be making on how to start an IV, so please check that out. And if you have any questions on the different gauge needles of IVs, how to start, how to actually start an IV or find veins, please check out my other videos on IVs. And thank you so much for watching, and please visit our website, registernursrn.com, for more nursing school tips and nursing school help. And thanks again. Bye.